Okay class, and welcome back. This week we're going to be going over chapter 8 in your textbook. Uh, this is a chapter on binder jetting additive manufacturing. So this week's lesson is a little bit short because binder jetting is actually using a few technologies that we're all pretty familiar with so far. Uh, one being the powder bed, like we learned about last week. And also, um, instead of using a laser to bind, this is actually using an inkjet printer. And we all know inkjet from um, your, your standard 2D printer, your paper printer that you use in an office or a home environment. And so binder jetting kind of combines those two technologies and forms this one new uh, binder jetting technology developed in the 90s. So let's hop into this slideshow and take a look at a few things and we'll have a few videos at the end and then uh, that'll be it. So, um, first of all, the OG 3D printing. I say this, you know that SLA is the oldest type of 3D printing. However, 3D printing, the actual name, was coined in regard to binder jetting. And so this is, of course, because it's using a 2D printing technology, an inkjet, uh, and it's going up in layers, forming a 3D object, therefore we call it 3D printing. Okay, so uh, binder jetting was developed in the 1990s uh, and it was actually developed at MIT. All right, so on this diagram here, you can see uh, kind of what we're working with. So like we had last week, you can see that we have a powder bed here. And then instead of the laser up on the top, you see there's an XY positioning system with an inkjet print head on it. And so that's going to be what's shooting uh, rather than a laser, it's actually shooting a binder material, a liquid typically, and so that's how that works. Um, and like I said, it's using a, a powder similar to powder bed fusion. Um, and yeah, so the other cool thing about this technology is it typically does not require heat, and therefore, um, you know, it's a, it's a cold process, so it's not using a whole bunch of electricity, so it's pretty energy efficient. The way that this works is, once again, you've got that bed of powder and the inkjet head kind of runs across it. And then the part moves down and a new layer of powder is rolled over the top of it. And then it just continues to be repeated until the part is complete. After that, since you're using a liquid binder in this case, you do actually have to leave the part in the powder for a while and let it set up. After that, you can remove the part from the powder. And then the new step that we haven't really seen, we saw a little bit with SLS, but not very much, um, is you actually infiltrate it with another material to make it stronger. And so there's a lot of different ways to do that. You'll see a little bit of that in the videos we watch at the end. And then finally, um, what materials can be used? Uh, there are a lot of materials for binder jetting. Um, the cheapest machines that you would get uh, use a, a powder that's like plaster based and then it's a water-based material uh, for the binder and so it's essentially like making a paste um, you do have more expensive machines that use polymers um, and so they make stronger stronger parts and then uh, the other cool thing about this is since you're using an inkjet head print head you can actually make full color and so um, a lot of video game companies and uh, movie companies things like that they actually make props and models and things like that for their games with this technology because they can be full color. Uh, another cool thing about this is uh, with SLS, like we talked about last week, a lot of the powder that gets used can't be reused because the particulate size changes. But with binder jetting, since it's not actually heating it up, all of the unused powder is fully recyclable. So that's really good and cost efficient. And then uh, the other cool thing about this is you can do metals and ceramics with binder jetting, but just like with SLS, you will have to center that part in a centering oven in order to be able to um, have it solidify and make it into a full metal part. So like I said, not a whole lot of new information for you guys this week because this is using pretty similar technologies as what we've already talked about, but I wanted to show it to you. Um, now let's watch a few videos on how this technology can really be used. Binder jetting additive manufacturing is a process inspired by the technology of inkjet printers. In this process, a liquid binder is selectively deposited on a powder bed with a print head. It is a growing process that allows the production of parts for the manufacturing, medical, and dental industries. 
This technique enables the production of metallic and ceramic parts, as well as sand molds for castings. To start the process, a 3D drawing is imported into the printer software. The powder to be used is placed in a dispenser, which ensures a constant supply during printing. First, a powder layer of a specific thickness is spread. Thereafter, the printing head, moving on two axes, projects the binder where is necessary. Before moving on to the next layer, the solvent contained in the binder is evaporated by an incandescent lamp. The powder bed is then lowered and a new powder layer is deposited. Therefore, the production takes place in a series of steps that build the part layer by layer. When the cycle is completed, the binder is cured by placing the container in a furnace. The temperature and time depend on the type of binder employed during printing. After this step, unbound particles are removed to reveal the part or the mold. After this step, the sand molds are ready to be used in foundries. The metal and ceramic parts must undergo sintering, infiltration, heat treatment or hot isostatic pressing before being used.
All right, so I hope those videos were helpful to kind of show you some of the applications that binder jetting can be used in. Just like you have in the previous weeks, you will have an assignment, a discussion, and a quiz this week. So be sure you get all that knocked out. Uh, be sure you comment on two other people's posts. Um, that is part of your grade, so be sure you do that. Be sure you get it knocked out in time, and you have until Saturday at midnight. That is 11.59 Saturday night to get it all done. So hope you guys have a great week. If you need anything from me, feel free to reach out. I am available. So have a great week.